We're just two guys with one mission, and we've chosen to accept it for some reason. It's time to tell them what we mean, what we say. Watch the 1981 Lucio Fulci film, The House by the Cemetery. Yes, that happened. I don't know how to describe what happened in this movie. Tons of nothing. Yeah. And and then 20 what, minutes of... And lots like, of things that didn't matter. And then 20 minutes of stuff that kind of made sense, I guess. No, I guess it was like 20 minutes... Like the last 20 minutes, I think, were pretty good. They were like... It was exciting. From which, I think from which point are you classing that? The, as soon as Bob gets trapped in the basement, then it started to get a bit more exciting. Before Anna dies or after Anna dies? Oh, after Anna dies. Okay. Like, after he finds Anna's severed head, and uh, then he, his parents don't believe him, and then he gets trapped in the basement. From that point onwards, it was pretty good. Okay, but you got an annoying kid screaming over that entire thing, which kind of makes it super annoying at the same time. Well, I think Bob's super annoying anyway. Yeah. For the entire film, he's... Oh, he is unbearable. Really, really annoying. Okay, we're going to try our best to describe the plot of this movie. You are. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> film opens up and... A man uh, and a woman. <laughs> and there's a woman looking for a boyfriend called Steve. Yeah, and Steve, great name. Steve comes through the door and his head's all a mess, like a big... Like, look, like a big, bloody cancerous mess yeah but the thing she re- is really upset about about the fact that he's been stabbed with a pair of scissors yeah hang on a minute I think you've already got that wrong I don't think he comes through the door I think he's hanging off the back of a door and he's stuck to it with the scissors through the sh- oh through his shoulder. I think he's ha- I think he's already dead the top of his head's missing blood's everywhere yeah and he's hanging off the back of a door but like it zooms in on the scissors because like, yeah yeah because that's the bit she's upset about yeah anyway and then she gets stabbed through the back of the head which looks sweet. And then we cut to present day New York, where a researcher and his family move into this house to do research. Yeah, they're moving out to the country. Yeah. So he so does he a piece can of do quiet. Some research, and the wife and the kitty can have a six month vacation. Yeah, the kitty is already sh- showing some. We just watched The Shining yeah. um, <laughs> traits. You can see, oh, before they leave New York, he can see yeah, he a can girl see. in a photo of a house. Yeah. That the mother can't see. Yeah, and then when they get to the house, it's the same house on the photo. Yeah. But also, he meets the girl while he's being left alone in a car, parked car, yeah. while they go and sign paperwork. <laughs> Something that wouldn't happen today. Yeah, they cracked a window. In 1981. <laughs> they cracked a window, it was fine. <laughs> it's, it seems... Yeah, so he sees the girl, and then wanders off outside, like, a dress shop. And then gets a free... A mannequin... That no, lay. it's not him that sees the mannequin. It's her that, sees, her the that sees the mannequin. You see, this yeah, movie right. is, like, really difficult to piece together. Yeah. Anyway, they get to the house. It's pretty spooky. They can't open the basement. This young girl called Anya, uh, Anna, Anna. Is, is there. And she's been sent as a babysitter to she's look Annie after... Annie the nanny. Annie the, Annie the nanny, yeah. And there's definitely some kind of weird... I don't know. I assumed it was like sexual tension between the dad and the and the babysitter, but like that didn't they didn't really do really? it. Yeah, didn't, because you know, because it zooms in on her eyes and it zooms in on his eyes. Yeah, but it does that all the way through the film, no matter whether yeah whether like, they're near each other or not. That's just Fulci's eyes zoom yes. that he always fucking does. Yeah, I thought it might mean something. No, I don't think so. I don't think anything in this film means anything. Well. Food for thought, eh? We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, when they get they when they when the wife Catriona 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 Oh my God, Katrina. Catri- I think it's Catriona. They may be spelled that way, but it's pronounced Katrina. All right, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Lady from the beyond. Yeah. She's cleaning and she finds a tombstone in the the house, and the tombstone is under a, a rug. <laughs> under a rug, covered in dust. Is for a Dr. Freudstein. <laughs> um, this wasn't even trying. Yeah. And from this point, 
<laughs> what happens? Like, reason. yeah, like the the, the real estate the real lady estate comes, agent comes and, over and she gets stabbed the, by a poker. I just met her. Well, first of all, the uh, tombstone cracks open. Yes, she falls into it and breaks her ankle. Yeah, which is quite nice and graphic. Yeah, I like that. But then while she's lying on the floor, somebody with a weird hand yeah. uh, stabs her with a poker a few times. Poker? I just met her. Jamaica? Yes. Cool. No, New England. <laughs> no, Boston, it said. <laughs> New Whitby. So that happens. And then Anya gets... I keep saying, because that's the actress's name. Anna gets... Anna. Gets got. She gets, a, she gets her head sliced off with a knife yeah. in the basement. Which is very reminiscent of the... Head coming off the mannequin that the little yeah. ginger girl sees, yeah, or doesn't. And then the then Bob gets trapped in the basement. No, and then the dad is goes away to find out some evidence on Doctor Freudstein. Yeah, listens and to then, an Evil Dead style tape of yeah the dude ex, uh, explaining his experiments in the house. And then destroys the tape in a fire in a library. Which yeah, why would you have fire in a library? Fire? Well, this will bring, we'll come to that. <laughs> Open flame in the library, what's going on there? Um, and then, when he comes back, Bob is trapped in the in the basement. Yeah, Mum can't get in. Can't get the door open, so Dad tries to bash it down with a, an axe, and it almost cuts Bob's... Twice. Twice. Almost chops into Bob's um, hands. Bob collapses down the bottom of the stair, but it does cut Dr. Freudstein's arm off. Yes. Dr. Freudstein, we now find out through the evidence that he's found at the library, is living downstairs. Yeah. And killing people because he needs human nutrients to keep himself alive. Yeah, but also his general state is a whimpering sound. It's to sound like a whimpering child. Yeah. Which is the exact same voice as Bob. Yeah, and his entire head looks like an earbud you've just pulled out of a particularly filthy ear. I just don't understand why they didn't voice the crying in a different... Like, there's so many that we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Dad gets... Dad, they get into the basement. Yeah. Dad gets his throat torn out yeah. by Dr. Freud. Franken, weird. Franken... Frankenchrist. Frankenchrist. Frankenberry. Yeah. And then we don't really see... No, Mum gets dragged down the stairs. She gets dragged down the stairs and kind of passes out. And then when she goes... When Freudstein goes to grab Bob, the little ginger girl from earlier rescues him. Mm. And then he's transported back in time. And Dr. Freudstein's wife is there. And he says, don't worry, we're going to go for a walk in the woods. Or, in a Beyond-style twist, I think he's dead. And he's joined everybody else in heaven. The ginger girl's not real. Yeah. Mrs. Freudstein has been dead for thousands of years. Not thousands. Well, you know what I mean. She died in 1915. She Metaphorically. And actually, Bob got killed, and he's gone off with them. Well, I guess... Not with his parents, obviously. Yeah, where are they? He's, he's gone off with them into the netherworld, into what you might call the beyond, which is the exact same ending as the beyond, as far as I interpreted it, if you remember rightly. We interpreted that differently. Yeah, this was Bobbins. <laughs> I mean, where do we begin with, like, um, who was the little girl? What's the significance? Why? The significance of why then? Why The Shining? I think, yeah, so I think... Why the Evil Dead tape? Why is there a fireplace in the library? library. It's not even a fireplace, it's like a fire pit. The only one that I would question... This is the... (laughs) Is the little girl... Yeah. I think is the daughter of Funkenstein and his wife. Right. She was warning him from the past in the photo... Don't come here or whatever. Nobody else can see her because he's talking to her when he's out with Anna one day and Anna didn't see her either. So I think she's a ghost that lives in his head. Hence why I think at the end he then becomes a ghost and goes off to play with his friend or has tea with his friend and Mrs. Funkenstein. There you go. Done. Okay. This film's wrapped. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Yeah, that's fine. But why was Anna so shifty? I think she was just shifty. I think she was just... Uh, she maybe... But why? Uh, what purpose did it have for her being shifted? What did any fucking thing in this film have? Well, this is my problem. This is the whole point of discussion, Steve. I think it's... The whole point of I think discussing the film. I think it's to be weird. I think it's... I think it's, you know, red herring, red herring, red herring, red herring, so you don't... Oh, it's barely what's going on. a red herring. And then actually... Well, it got you thinking something different, didn't it? So, uh, About uh, what? Uh, well, you thought she had some sexual tension with the Doctor. Yeah, I thought that was going to plan out. And the weird thing is I'd seen this movie before. Yeah, whereas I think that's just shifty shots and you know here's another weird thing here's another weird thing Twin Peaks he lost style here's another weird thing that goes fucking nowhere 
I disagree with you about Twin Peaks. I know. Stuff going on. I don't But you understand lost. what I mean. I know what you mean. Thank you. So I think it's that. I think I just it's don't understand. Weirdness, weirdness, I just don't understand weirdness, weirdness. how he can make the beyond just before this. Yeah, days before this. Like, and and the beyond is like pretty great. It's fucking awesome is the beyond. And this is pretty bad, except the last twenty minutes are pretty exciting. Though it's my gory. Problem, my, my problem, yeah, oh, much gory. Well, mm, I know that acid face thing was awesome. And my the, problem with the last twenty minutes is that I'd kind of mentally checked out and I did not give two shits about any of the characters. Yeah, that's because the first hour is so boring. And super annoyed that the kid didn't from get an axe in the head. That's what, that's what you want out of life, is it, Steve? No, that's what I wanted out of this film. <laughs> <laughs> I work in a hospital. I don't want anybody to get hit with an axe. No, because it means more work for you. Exactly. I don't want that. But in the context of this film, it would have at least made me chuckle a bit. As it was, I, I see what you mean. It, it certainly ramps up towards the end. But the first hour just it's, made me not give yeah, a it shit about the so, last half hour. So much. Yeah. I, I and it is just weirdness, weirdness, weirdness. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know what the fuck's going on. No clues are given, and and most of it comes to naught anyway. Yeah. It turns out there's just a fucking boogeyman living downstairs. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, is there some fucking, you know... And the thing is, he was supposed to do... To is, is there a madness thing going on with the wife? And actually, maybe a lot of this is what she's imagining, because she's off her meds and stuff like that. Yeah, so which None there's... of that fucking plays out no, at all. It's also, like, if he's doing experiments, wouldn't there be science stuff around? You would think. No, because it wasn't him doing experiments, was it? Yeah. I thought it was Peterson that was doing the experiments. No, he no, he was doing... Peterson well, was researching before... He was a doctor. Dr. Funkenstein. Dunker, Dr. Duncan yeah. Funken... Duncan Firebrand. <laughs> <laughs> Dino Fire Sale. Yeah. So what was he doing in the house before Peterson started researching him? Was that ever established? No, I guess he was always there, and he needed. Was it not just a doctor's house? That's just where he lived. But if he's, but presumably there's some sort of science going on. He's using the body parts to make himself whole again, or he's eating them. He's just eating them or some shit. Yeah, I don't think that was ever stuff. But is that why he's made of maggots and worms? I mean, that's just because he's rotting from the inside out. Oh uh, yeah, there is a disgusting shot where he gets stabbed and what appears to be poop and maggots come out. Yeah. That was, pretty, that was pretty gross. And then they turn into worms on the ground. And they turn into worms on the ground. It's pretty, like, ugh. Yeah, that is pretty gross. I mean, it's going to get, like, a four or a five for gore. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think like, it'll score pretty highly on some things. <laughs> and really, and really low yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. It's a Lucio no. Fulci movie, but I think this is kind of the beginning at the end of his, like... This is the worst one I've seen. Reign of yeah, reign of greatness. Like uh, I really, I mean, it's in a certain light you have to respect the kind of auteur nature of what mm-hmm. it is. It's definitely a Lucio Fulci movie. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, but it's just not a particularly good one. No, and I feel like the I mean, one, eventually we're going to get to the best one. Yes, but the, I feel like the ones after this, all his, the rest of his eighties movies were kind of similar... Which are the ones after this? New York Ripper. Uh, I don't remember now what's after New York Ripper. Um, <laughs> Manhattan Baby. <laughs> like, they're all kind of, like, nonsensical. Bronx Killer. <laughs> Queen Slasher. Harlem Shake. <laughs> Stein Island Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck else do we say about this other than scoring it? Because I don't know what what else to... What else was there? Was there anything else that stood out particularly to you? Was... I don't know how Did we ask. point out how annoying the fucking kid was? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. From word one out of his mouth... Well, out of somebody's mouth. <laughs> She's like, fucking Yeah, it wasn't, because definitely that was not his no, voice. No, like, yeah, why did they... Why did they cast Dr. Freudstein's whimpering voice the, b- b- by mm. the same person who did Bob? Yeah. Like... It didn't make any. It's well, maybe, make any again, sense. Maybe, again, maybe it's a, a. It's to throw you off because maybe when he's whimpering, maybe you're supposed to think like, well, maybe that's Bob. Maybe it's going to be a killer kid thing. Who the fuck knows? None of it. None of it fucking pays yeah, off. But none of it makes it's not, sense. It's not satisfying. I'm unsatisfied. I'm un. I'm absolutely. I'm not surprised. Un- it's a very unsatisfied. unsatisfying film. It had the promise to be great, and it wasn't. I'm, that's me getting angry because there's no camera you can't see me so you have to envision me getting angry but I'm not really angry maybe you'll have to do a special animation for you'll me you'll have to do a special animation Doctor Manimation your angry face oh alright 
Steve, Thanks. should we score this one out? Let's. What would you give for story? Well, in that I didn't have a clue what was going on at any point, That's which not... is different than sense. Okay. I just didn't have a clue what was going on at any point, so the story, I couldn't follow it. Okay. You couldn't follow it. Well, it's a family moves to the middle of nowhere, weird stuff happens, and then it doesn't. Yeah, but that's that's the story. <sighs> okay, then one, because right. that's all the story that there was. I feel like there was, it was, there was actually like a pretty good story that was unexplored. <laughs> I feel like... Like there could have been a rem- like there could have been like a hint of, of relationship between the dad and the babysitter. They could have explored the concept of um, the mum being off her meds yeah. a little bit more. They could have explored what Doc- Dr. Freudstein's deal was. Could have, yeah. But I'm but saying you can't score it on could have. No, um, but I'm saying it was. But I'm just gonna break, I'm gonna give it two. <laughs> but that's only because I can see some elements in the story that were there that were just not fleshed out enough for some reason. Right. But that could also just be your perception. I mean, the movie was boring in places. Yes. How many times did we have to deal with watching Bob play with his car yeah. when they could have been exploring the story? Mm. I know that Bob likes cars. Yeah. You only need to show it once. Just have him holding a car every other scene. Yeah. And then I'll get that he understands that he's like... He like likes him cars. liking cars is not an essential part of the plot. It's not. All right. I gave you a one. I'm getting a two. Yeah, well... You're fired. Four. You're fired. <laughs> mm. Now, is it a five or is it a four? I'm getting a four because it was fucking great. Every yes. single bit of it was brilliant. That yeah. neck looked fucking brilliant. The, ne- all the, ne- the, the neck getting thro- like pulled the out... Thro- the neck getting stabbed was really, really good. The neck yeah. getting sliced yeah. was fucking incredible. These are some really, really great effects. In yeah. I'm only going to go not five because there wasn't enough of it for me. Because I know that, say, something like Zombie Flesh Eaters is going to be fucking wall-to-wall carnage. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm saving a five for that. I think I might... This was, this was really, really good, but it's not, it's not like a splat film. It's not a gore film. No. But the gore that was in it was... It was plentiful. Yes. And fucking fantastic. Yes. But it also took half its runtime to actually get to anywhere. <laughs> no, I guess it's there's a kill at the beginning, and then it just slows. Yeah, and the, the, uh, yeah, I mean the the kill at the start is great. Yeah, but it is too long in between. But the but the, also the kill at the start is actually pr- one of the least bloody. Yeah, well, it's just yeah, it's just a knife going through. But it so looks I'm great. also going to give it. It a looks four. Savini style great. I'm gonna also going to give it a four. So yeah. it's a four from you and a four from me. Okay. So for the overall creativity... Now, that's tough, because even though it fucking makes no sense, it was kind of creative. Yeah, it's just that do we mark it down for being a rip-off, a combination rip-off of Shining. The Shining and Evil Dead? Yeah. <laughs> or do we mark it up for ripping for the, combining <laughs> the Shining and the Evil Dead? Uh, this, is the, this is what I think. So it's probably going to be a three. I think a three as well. I think a bit of both of those. I think marking down because it's such a rip-off, but also gets up to three because it's ripping them both off. But also, I feel like it should get some recognition because it looked pretty great. Yeah, Cinematography was super, yeah. really great. Yeah, it does look and super. And it has a really nice, it has a really great mood. It's just, it's really faulty, boring. Yeah, faulty films have a tendency to look fucking great. Yeah. Like, the Beyond looks fucking phenomenal. But it's... So, yeah, I think straight down the wire with the three on that. All right. None. <laughs> zero. Yeah, for logical sense, I think I might have to Absolute lock it down to zero. zero. It doesn't make any it's sense It's like, there's so many questions. It doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. No. Diddly, diddly. So that's a zero from you and zero from you. Did. Okay, now the music. Hmm. Now, it's in a style that I think you particularly enjoy, and I think is okay, but it's done badly. Yes, I think I enjoy the style, but I would not rank this amongst the best Any of the goblins or the Fritzies or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like it's not as good as uh, any of the Fabio Fritzi Fulci scores, oh. and it's definitely not as good as any of the goblin stuff that they were doing at the time there's some bits where i think it really works yes. and there's some bits where i was just, it just it's just really like so generic italian horror yeah because it'll, it, be it'll be doing that kind of like kind of creepy synth thing and then also be like yeah she's like oh you didn't need that huh? and there's that one bit towards the end that's just fucking weird where it's like oh, building yeah. and building and building and dead stop 
and yeah, they're they're building and building and building it. But the thing is, it doesn't. If they'd have had an establishing shot in the film where he's attacking, he's attacking, he's attacking, and where's he gone? Yeah. Then that would have kind of worked. In like you know the jaws, da 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 da, and the fucking shark's gone. And but that wasn't really established. And then all of a sudden, it just like cuts back to essentially the same shot of them at the top of the stairs, and the music starts building and building and building. Yeah. And it's just like. Uh, match your music team I guess they were missing shots and that's the only explanation for it possibly is that um, they really didn't but it's that hard cut of music it's yeah just, there was a lot of hard, really hard cuts I don't know what the situation was maybe they just didn't have enough time uh, they just re-edit the, the score yeah they just had to go with what was recorded possibly uh, but uh, I'm going to go two I'll probably give it a three just because I like the style yeah no, that, that's the difference between our scores that I would fully expect. Not a great one. No. All right. I think actually that might have scored pretty highly. So it's official. It's Ooh. not as good as Gustavo's last torch. <laughs> <laughs> For a 22 out of 50, <laughs> below average, lesser Fulci, shall we, yeah. shall we say. Yeah. But I guess this will come down to... I don't the... know if that's lower or higher than I would have thought, to be honest with you. I was expecting a bit higher. Hmm. Before we went into it, I would have expected it to be higher. Yeah, it's I was expecting it to be a bit yeah, higher, higher but um, it's not. It's not, it's not great. great Fulci, no. Yeah, it's a terrible Fulci movie. R- and rest in peace, brother, because uh, you can't make any more. So now well, this is all we got. Nah. Would you recommend this movie, Steve? No, I would not. I'm afraid. Um, if somebody came up to me and said, "Hey, recommend me something like this," I would straight away go for Beyond. Yeah, I think you need to be a diehard. Fulci fan mm. to yeah. get something out of it you have to and even then and that's a dying breed these days even then I mean I get the, I, I think this movie probably has its fans oh I don't doubt that yeah. um, but I'm not I mean, one of those and I probably would not recommend it no it's just boring yeah although what this has over uh, whatever the first one we did Funhouse yes it does have that 20 minutes at the end where at least something interesting is happening yeah. and it's got like some fucking sweet gore in it so it's at least got something that gets... I think that's the difference in points. Yeah. Because it was boring for an hour, the same as Funhouse was, but this does have enough redeeming qualities about it. Yeah, like the so effects are great. Scott, the, the effects are fucking The great. effects are great. Yeah. Which, again, is to be expected with the Fulci movie. Because, again, that was one of the greatest things about the Beyond. Like, some of yeah. those fucking effects are mind-blowing. All right. Um, yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, we're done then. Cool. Okay, see you next time. Till next bat time. Bye. On this bat channel. Bye. On the bat batish channel. Do the bunnel. Bunnel. The YouTube bat tunnel. Yeah, the Europe. Well. Bye. 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 <laughs>